Hi guys, this is Ollie. Uh, today I'm going to run you through a quick example of how to unpivot cross-tab data where there are multiple row fields that you want to preserve in your output. I posted on my blog some time ago uh, one of the methods for unpivoting cross-tab data uh, which relies on having one single row field. This is some meaningless example data but it shows the principle where in this case we have six row fields we want to preserve then we have one column field, in this case it's a date field, and some values. And we want to turn this into a data source, which we can then use the, the date as a field in a pivot table. So let's start off by inserting a column between our last row field and the start of our data set. We'll name that column index. And here we'll just put a unique index number to identify each row. It's not very important what you use here as long as it's unique. Um, but to make things easier when we retrieve data later on, I'll just start this at 1. And we'll carry on as, as follows. We can auto fill that down. So there we have rows 1 to 25 have unique index number. So for the time being, when we do the unpivot using the multiple consolidation range pivot table technique, we're going to ignore fields 1 to 6, and we'll add those back into our data set later on. So let's start off unpivoting, and in later versions of Excel, the multiple consolidation range pivot table is only accessible from the pivot table wizard, which is not a default item in the ribbon controls. So to access this, we need the keyboard shortcut, which is Alt, D, P. There we are, there's our wizard. Pick multiple consolidation ranges with a pivot table report and click next. Forget about page fields. For this exercise, we don't need to create any page fields at all. So just select I will create them and click next. Now we pick our data range. So this is where we pick, as I mentioned, just that single row field, so the index column, and all the columns containing the column fields, all the dates, and all the data values. Add that into our pivot wizard. Leave the page fields at zero, we don't need those, and click next. I'd always recommend putting this pivot table report in a new worksheet. This is only a temporary bit of data we're making. Uh, the pivot table is only needed for a short period of time. And if we put down a new worksheet, that makes it very easy to delete once we're finished with it. So there we go. What we have, I'll zoom out a little, make this easier to see. What we have there is another view of our data. It looks very similar to our source data but in a pivot table format, and critically what we have now is a grand total column and a grand total row. This is the clever bit. Where those two intersect, so the grand total of the column intersects the grand total of the row, the overall figure, if we now double click in that cell, what Excel does is it gives us the source data for the pivot table. And here, it breaks down each of our dates each of our row numbers into a distinct row. So we're very nearly already at the format of data that we want in our output. Now what we need to do is restore our original six fields. So to make this nice and easy, let's copy our field headers from our original data source. put them in as part of a table, we'll just create a, a, a standard data set. Now we can use an index to retrieve our original field values. Using an index function, uh, you can see why I used a row number. So now I can use that row number um, along with a relative column reference to bring back our original field values. I'll just make our lookup range absolute. So now I can copy that formula both down. And 
to cross. One more to go. Now we have all our original field values for each of the rows. We can add in the date from our unpivoted data. Let's format that as a date so that it works correctly in our summary pivot table. Some people asked for um, being able to summarize dates by week. So an easy way to do that is to add in a week number field. And then finally our value. Now what I tend to do at this point is all these formulas we've just created to retrieve our data set, I'll copy and paste these as values so we're breaking the links. Paste special as values. Okay. Now we can delete all our temporary data, including the temporary pivot table. And now we have a data set that we can use to create our summary pivot table. Create a pivot table in the normal way. Let's put this in a new worksheet. Now we have all the fields that we want to be able to filter on, including our date. A neat trick in pivot tables with a date field is we can choose to group a date by different periods of time. In this case, let's pick years and months. And now we can add those as filter fields. There we have it, a simple technique with just a few steps which takes us from cross-tab data into data where we can use the date field as a filter within the pivot table. If you have any questions, get in touch with me on Excel Forum or via the website excel.solutions. Thank you.